Hello, my name is Dr. Rolando Herrero. I am an epidemiologist and medical oncologist, and I'm currently the head of the Early Detection and Prevention Section of the International Agency for Research on Cancer, which is a uh, cancer research uh, specialized agency of the World Health Organization. And we do cancer research for cancer prevention, basically. I'm going to talk today about the epidemiology of gastric cancer and preventive and research efforts around the world for control of this uh, very serious public health problem around the world. So I'm going to talk about uh, gastric cancer, the gastric cancer problem around the world and helicobacter pylori eradication for its control. First, let's discuss a little bit about the global burden of gastric cancer. We have data from 2012 uh, from Globocan, and, uh, which is the, the, the data gathered by the International Agency for Research on, on Cancer. There is about uh, a million cases of gastric cancer every year around the world with 750,000 deaths. The, Incidence rate around the world is 12 per 100,000. There is a very important regional variation and a 2 to 1 male to female ratio. This is the map of the distribution of gastric cancer around the world. You can see that the, the, the highest incidences are in Asia, in, in Eastern Asia, some parts of China and some parts of Eastern Europe, with also some high incidence areas in Portugal and Spain and in Latin America, particularly in the mountain areas. The general tendency of gastric cancer is to decline all over the world. Here at the top, you can see rates from, one, from an area in Japan. You can see that the, the incidence is higher in males than females, twice as high, but the tendency in general is to decline. However, the global burden of the disease is not expected to decline still for several decades because there is going to be a big increase in the number of people aged 65 and older, particularly in the less developed regions. While in the more developed regions, those numbers are not expected to increase much in the, in the next uh, few decades. Uh, the, the gastric cancer is a disease of older age, and so the longer our populations live, the more we're going to have uh, gastric cancer, and this is what's going to happen, especially in less developed regions. Uh, for example, if we just added the demographic effect, this increase in the, in the numbers of older people, we would be seeing an increase from 1 million cases to 1.5 million cases by the year 2030. Uh, however, if we apply the 2% reduction, annual percent change in the incidence, uh, the, the, of course the increase would be less, but still we're going to have a million cases or so by 2030. Now, it is clear that Helicobacter pylori uh, causes about 90% of, of non-cardiac gastric cancer, which is the most common by far uh, type of, of, of gastric cancer. It's a class 1 carcinogen classified by, the, by, the, by our agency, International Agency for Research on Cancer. And we have clearly identified the way it progresses, uh, the infection progresses to uh, from a normal mucosa that gets infection usually in childhood it progresses over time to superficial gastritis to chronic gastritis atrophic gastritis and then uh, into the precursor lesions like intestinal metaplasia dysplasia and eventually to gastric carcinoma all this process is generally asymptomatic. There is no symptoms necessarily linked to any of these conditions. In some cases, the infection is associated with gastric or duodenal ulceration that is also uh, potentially cur curable with uh, treatment. And also malt lymphoma, which is a rare type of lymphoma, which is infection related. We know the virulence factors that are associated with this, with this uh, bacteria that are present in the bacteria and that are more likely to end in cancer. 
for example, the presence of the Kage pathogenicity island or vaccay, certain subtypes of this vaccay cytotoxin. Uh, however, these, these virulence factors really have not led to biomarkers that, that are clinically useful. Among the environmental cofactors, we have uh, smoking, salt, alcohol, and preserved foods that increase the risk of gastric cancer uh, among people who are infected with Helicobacter. There are also some genetic factors that are mainly related to uh, the, the strength of their immune response to this bacterium that is uh, responsible for more or less damage to the gastric mucosa. Among the preventive interventions against gastric cancer, we know that we can treat already, uh, Helicobacter pylori with antibiotics and, and, and strong anti-acid uh, drugs, uh, usually uh, 10 to 14 days uh, antibiotic scores, and it can, be, it, can, it can eliminate the infection. And that this infection, this eradication of Helicobacter is able to prevent between 30 and 40 percent of gastric cancer. There is a recent meta-analysis of all the studies that have been conducted, all, all the clinical trials, uh, and the, the combined uh, risk of gastric cancer is 0 0.66. That means it's a 35% reduction uh, after several years of eradication for pre I mean, reduction in gastric cancer. However, the numbers are limited. The, most of the studies are conducted in, in, in Asia, but the numbers are quite limited. Uh, some studies have been done of the cost effectiveness of such an intervention. And it seems like it would be very cost effective uh, based on observational data and still not including all the, all the potential benefits or potentially adverse consequences. Uh, but the, it's a relatively inexpensive one is in the lifetime intervention that can have a, a, a large impact. The, there are recent recommendations from the Maastricht Florence group uh, that were issued in 2016, and they recommend that screen and treat strategies are, are, should be started in intermediate at high risk communities and individuals. Uh, with the caveat that it may increase resistance in, in other pathogens other than Helicobacter, and some aspects about the, the indication of the different treatments depending on the, pre, on the existence of uh, antibiotic resistance in the community. Now, the evidence from the, from the trials indicates potential benefits, but it is limited by those small numbers I mentioned. And there are still some questions. For example, we don't know exactly what is going to be the magnitude of the effect, particularly when, consider, when considering different age groups. We would expect that the effect would be much stronger in younger groups, uh, while in older groups there may be already uh, some lesions that have advanced uh, and therefore not likely to benefit from the eradication, and so we may not be able to stop the process when doing the treatment uh, in older ages or too late. Uh, it is also unclear what's going to be the acceptability and feasibility of an intervention like this. Uh, we don't know the rates of recurrence or reinfection, and also the potential adverse consequence need, consequences need more research. Among the potential deleterious effects, is uh, gastrointest gastroesophageal reflux disease, Barrett esophagus, esophageal adenocarcinoma, that are known to increase after treatment of Helicobacter, or in places where Helicobacter is no longer highly prevalent. Similarly, the presence of asthma and other immune conditions has been has been described as a possible uh, adverse consequences, particularly in children weight gain, and then, as I said, antibiotic resistance and alterations in the microbiota need more study. We had a, a, a meeting of experts in 2013 to discuss all these topics. Their conclusions were basically that uh, we should explore uh, H. pylori screen and treatment programs, considering disease burden, health priorities, and cost effectiveness in different regions. 
and that these uh, programs should be implemented with scientific assessment of program process, feasibility, effectiveness, and possible adverse consequences. In terms of the, the program, the research program that we have here at IARC, one of the one of the main studies we're doing after this meeting, we started the helper study. That is a study that is uh, taking advantage of the national gastric cancer screening screening program that is underway in Korea. And so we are collaborating with the National Cancer Center of Korea. And we are inviting people between 40 and 65 years participating in the screening program, about 11,000 people who come for their endoscopy. So we, are, we, we detect the presence of helicobacter and there is a randomization to eradication of the, of the bacterium or not eradication, they receive placebo. This is uh, because in, in Korea, there is currently no reimbursement for treatment in general for the for the population for of this kind of treatment and there is they are expecting additional data to to include this as a potential public health intervention and we're also following we're following these groups that's going to be the main comparison between the the treated versus untreated and there is also the group of helicobacter negative that is going to allow us to study additional aspects of the natural history we are also doing a prevalence surveys of the presence of Helicobacter in the community, which are called the Enigma studies, basically to investigate the extreme variation in, in gastric cancer incidence around the world. For example, in Korea, Japan, the rates are around 70, while in some places of Africa or Asia also, uh, the rates are about two or three which is about the 30, 30 times higher. And this is, uh, we are hoping that this is going to give us important clues to the etiology of, of gastric cancer, additional clues. It's particularly because there is uh, this observation that uh, helicobacter prevalence does not correspond, does not explain the regional variations in gastric cancer. Down here, you can see the variation in gastric cancer. And as an example, you can see here, Africa has low rates of gastric cancer, but it has high rates of helicobacter. That's what originated in this, this name of the, the African enigma. In the enigma studies, so we are investigating the worldwide prevalence of helicobacter by age group using standard methods, trying to explain the regional differences that can be bacterial, host, or environmental. The, uh, this can allow also prediction of the future gastric cancer and also will allow us to assess antibiotic resistance and plan specific interventions as well as acceptability and feasibility of treatment. In the ENIGMA studies, the, basically we collect, uh, we recruit a population-based sample, age stratified, age and sex stratified, we do a questionnaire and we collect blood, feces, and urine. The first study that we completed was in Chile, where the incidence in the north is much lower in Antofagasta. The incidence is much lower than in Valdivia in the south. You can see twice as high in Valdivia. And as preliminary findings, we found the prevalence about 70% in the two sites. It increases with age from 10 to 90%. It's similar for men and women, similar by study site. But in the low-risk areas, we see more consumption of fruits and vegetables. This is a, these analyses are underway, and we are currently analyzing as well virulence factors in blood, atrophy markers like pepsinogens, uh, the presence of sodium in urine, parasites and microbiome in feces, antibiotic resistance, uh, metabolomics, genetics, the presence of mycotoxins, etc. And we're planning to do the same study in different uh, areas. We're beginning very soon in Iran, where there are extreme differences, and as well in, in several areas in Latin America, Korea, China, and Uganda. So in conclusion, gastric cancer will continue to kill millions of people for decades. Cancer control programs must include actions for its prevention and control. H. pylori eradication is a promising intervention, and the ongoing studies are expected to provide additional important answers. Thank you.